And as our last discussion of important bits, even though um, there's many other ways in which to study aromatic compounds than infrared, it is worth just pointing out a few of the uh, stretches associated with having that aromatic ring. So here are the particular frequencies we're going to be interested in. Again, I've included the carbon hydrogen space, uh, range, just so you've seen it. Carbon carbon double bonds, and then of course the benzene um, in quotes, carbon carbon double bonds, because I can't figure out how to put in one and a half bond in this particular format. So if I just compare a couple, methyl cyclohexane, so very, very boring kind of spectrum here, right? Essentially, you've got CH bonds, you have the CH stretches, the CH bends, and then various other bits down here associated with carbon carbon single bonds. Compare that to toluene. OK, and again, as we look at the the important features here, ignoring the fingerprint region, because that's particularly nasty, although it does have some good stuff in it for aromatics that you'll study when you get to university. Both of them have got the carbon hydrogen stretches. Both of them have got the carbon hydrogen bends. But what I want you to note is that toluene has this stretch here that is right down there, just about 1600, just as we would expect from the carbon carbon double bond for benzene. You can see it's a double band there, so you usually see two or three bands, two or three signals in that particular region for the benzene. And of course, the benzene ring, the toluene has it, and the methyl cyclohexane doesn't have it. Um, I'm using the methyl substituted ones because the actual infrared spectrum of benzene is really terrible and tacky and yucky, mainly because, as we said, the stronger signals come when you've got the polar bonds. When you don't have polar bonds, and indeed when there is a um, lack of a molecular dipole, as is the case in benzene, then you get essentially zero infrared activity. But that, again, is a conversation for university. A couple of other examples associated with aromatics. Throwing in chlorocyclohexane compared to chlorobenzene. So this is the first time we've seen a chloro substituent. Um, pointing out again the much nicer peak here at about 1600 that is not present in the aliphatic versus the aromatic rings there. So definite way that you can see the presence of a, a benzene ring with that nice little peak right around 1600. And again, you can kind of see little double bits there. It's sort of two peaks together. Now, carbon chlorine, you should expect to see around here. So no doubt one would say that this would be a carbon chlorine stretch here in chlorobenzene. And you could probably claim that one of these up here is a carbon chlorine in chlorocyclohexane. But just do note how messed up that fingerprint region is. Really not much use for the average chemist to use in trying to analyze what they have. Very useful for comparing substances, very hard to use it to actually determine what you have. And as a last thought, let's compare the carbon-carbon double bond in a alkene to that pseudo carbon-carbon one and a half to double bond in benzene. Again, trying to find the closest things to compare, cyclohexadiene versus toluene. We've already seen toluene together. So again, you can see there's the carbon hydrogens stretches, the carbon hydrogen bends there, messing around in the fingerprint region. But the important parts are these ones up here at around 16 to 1700. So if we look at cyclohexadiene, there is the carbon-carbon double bond. And we look down there, it's about 1650, which would be smack in the middle of what we expect for a carbon-carbon double bond. And the same area there for the carbon-carbon pseudo double bond in benzene. And we expect that to be at a slightly less frequency than the straight double bonds that we see in the cyclohexadiene. And indeed, if I drop a line down from the cyclohexadiene, you can see that it is slightly higher frequency than the one in the aromatic species. So anyway, infrared, the important stuff, the massively important stuff in oxygen or compounds that contain oxygen, slightly less in compounds that contain nitrogen, and then a couple of quirky little examples associated with aromatics. Hope you enjoyed it. Won't be too much of a worksheet, 
this week because again there's really not a whole lot that one can test on at the A-level infrared level or indeed at the, the use of infrared generally in chemistry. It's going to be so much more exciting when we do mass spec and then particularly NMR.